Hello friends, welcome back to Aulan and Law. Today we are going to discuss about a patient with hypoglycemia. How do you manage? That's very important. And the few things what you should know about uh, hypoglycemia. Briefly I will be discussing the important points. Okay. Because initially the it was my first video when I uploaded this and I wasn't knowing the audio quality and the audio quality did not work properly so this is a kind of a similar video but it's good quality audio quality and good important points so before starting to tell you about this I'm gonna tell you one thing that we are gonna start with the cardiology okay we're going to start with the uh, what do you call a cardiology lectures okay um, okay we're starting with the cardiology lectures This is the cardiology lectures uh, by one of the great doctors from USA. So I want you, all of you, to watch the video and tell us, give us a feedback. And if you have any questions, you can uh, what do you call? You can uh, ask directly through the comments. Okay. So um, the, definitely, it will help you guys. And the other thing, what I wanna tell you, that's uh, after cardiology or during cardiology. We're gonna cover most of the topics from nephrology, so it's a good uh, what do you call uh, is opportunity for you guys to um, listen to the cardiology and the nephrology lectures. Okay, guys. So let me start with this, and uh, today's topic is gonna be something very interesting. That's a patient uh, with uh, hypoglycemia. okay so patient with a hypoglycemia so this is very important topic for your uh, USMLC can step 3 and even for a step 1 also so how do you manage okay so I will give you a case history for that and I will ask you that a patient comes to ER with a signs of hypoglycemia okay so this will be the type of case scenario in USMLC examination uh, a 35 years old or a 50 years old man rushes to ER with the signs of hypoglycemia like tremor, sweating, okay, um, giddiness and blah blah blah. All sympathetic features. So what is, the question will be, what is the best next step? So what will be the best next step? Yes. Can you guess what do you want to do? In terms of investigations, I'm telling is gonna be a plasma insulin. Okay, guys. So plasma insulin is the best next step. Sorry for that. Okay. So plasma insulin is gonna be the next best step. So what is that? actually when there's a patient of hypoglycemia, the two things, if there's a simple hypoglycemia, no food because of hungry, it's okay. Nothing to worry. Okay, if you give the dextrose, glucose, he will be active and he can walk out uh, of, your office, of your hospital. But if it's due to the insulinoma, Okay, or it can be due to exogenous insulin. Okay, or it can be due to substance. Okay, or it can be due to substance abuse. So these are the features, these are the causes. If if you measure the plasma insulin, the plasma insulin in a case of uh, insulinoma, it will be usually less than 200. Okay, in insulinoma, that's a pancreatic cancer, okay. In insulinoma, it will be less than 200, usually. It won't reach more than 200. But if it's exogenous or a substance like a drugs intake, 
okay that substance abuse means a drug intake okay so it will be around thousand or more okay that's very important it will be a one thousand around thousand so this is how you need to differentiate so this is how the plasma insulin is best next step uh, to investigate in a patient with a hypoglycemia if it's due to insulinoma, exogenous or a uh, drug so like hypoglycemic drugs, sulfonylureas. Okay guys, so there's a beautiful table I want to talk about. So that is very, very commonly asked in uh, what you call uh, um, in your USML examinations. Let me put on the table and see, show you. Let's see. Okay, this is a beautiful table, right? Okay, now I will put over here is insulinoma. That's a cancer, okay? Insulinoma. Okay, this is an insulinoma or exogenous insulin, okay? Sometimes, you know, teenage groups, they take exogenous insulin or adult, they take excess of insulin and they land it they land up in uh, hypoglycemia so this is very important feature exogenous insulin okay or a drugs like uh, what you call uh, sulfonyl ureas okay sulfonyl ureas now i'm going to talk about the most important thing is uh, what you call uh, tests are a pro insulin okay pro insulin let me change this font size okay right a uh, pro insulin uh, let me change the color also okay the pro insulin will be in insulinoma is gonna be what can you guess it's gonna be high it's gonna be high okay so it's a cancer so so the pancreatic cells starts increasing the what you call insulin so the pro insulin will be more okay but in a case of exogenous insulin or a drugs what it will be in a case of exogenous insulin it is uh, it can be a normal or it's low remember very important feature I'm talking about as a exogenous insulin because they are taking from outside it's from outside the body that's why the pro insulin pro insulin needs a genetic setup right so it's not from the body so it's not secreted right whatever you take insulin is from it's, it's already a insulin. It's not a pro-insulin. It's a pro-insulin. It's nothing but a precursor. Okay, that should be from the body. So pro-insulin. Now, in case of a drug, it's a normal. Remember, it's a normal. Okay. So now the next test is C-peptide. C-peptide. A C-peptide is similar to what you got pro-insulin. So it's going to be something, a different story over here. In an insulinoma, it's going to be high okay and in case of what you call exogenous it can be a normal or a low remember now the top points come here is a drug that is sulfonyl ureas in a sulfonyl ureas if the patient has against lots of drugs sulfonyl urea drugs then cp that's a c peptide is go gonna be high that's very important guys this is where esml will trick you now the third step is uh, just if you do two tests, uh, it makes you difficult. It can be insulinoma or it can be sulfonyl ureas drugs, right? So there's another test that's urine toxicology. That's urine toxicology, UT. Okay, so urine toxicology helps us to detect the drugs in the urine. Okay, so insulinoma, you won't get any kind of a drugs over there. So just it's going to be nil. Okay, exogenous insulin, of course, it's going to be nil. Whereas in a, a sulfonyl ureas, it's going to be present, right? That's it. This is a beautiful table you should know about. Okay, guys, so very important. What do you need to know about this, uh, this uh, what do you call, um, um, this uh, sorry for uh, this uh, table this is very important for USML examination so close your eyes and I want to ask you one questions and try to answer very important go ahead 
Tell me if the CP, that's a C peptide, is increased. Where do you see? Two conditions, insulinoma and drugs. Correct. Second question. Where do you see the pro-insulin is low? Is it going to be exogenous insulin? All right? Yes. Excellent. Urine toxicology is going to be present in the drugs. Sometimes they give the history of uh, hypoglycemic patients and they say urine toxicology is present and the CP is increased and the C peptide is increased and uh, what do you call the pro-insulin are normal. So what is the diagnosis? It's because of the drugs. Okay guys? So this is all about this. So thank you so much for watching this uh, video on All On and Law. And please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and please do not forget to share our videos. We reach okay lot many views a day thank you so much for your love please do share our videos with your friends thank you so much